Well guys, welcome back to the Ultimate PS Use and here we are with an i5 12600K under vaulting guide that will go very in depth and will cover actually even the 13th gen i5 3600K as well as what we are actually using here today, the i5 12600KF, they are the same CPU, the F doesn't matter, okay? What we're gonna be using today is an MSI Z690 gaming edge Wi-Fi motherboard, but this will work for every single motherboard out there. However, the settings might have a slightly different name. So in case the settings are not the exact same, you just have to read what they are and understand as I guide you through, and you will still be able to do it even if the names are not the exact same. I also have many more tutorials on the channel, so you can double check with different motherboards. For example, in my i9-12900K undervolt tutorial, I use a different brand, and in my i9-13900K, under the tutorial, I use a gigabyte board, so you might want to check this one out as well. So, without further ado, I say we get on and we reduce the temperature of our CPU, increase our performance, and reduce how much power it draws, fixing the thermal throttle issue. So let's go in the BIOS. Okay, so here we are in the BIOS. Now, first of all, I will tell you what to do for those of you that really don't want to spend any time thinking about what to do. So just go into the advanced mode, go into overclocking, okay, go all the way down, on CPU cooler tuning, if you have this, put tower air cooler, then enable your XMP, be sure to do this. Then all the way down, go to CPU core voltage mode, put it on offset, put it on minus by CPU right there, and then put 0 0.05, hit enter, hit F10, close it, you can close the video, but please drop a like and subscribe before. And this is it. This will give you all the benefits, most of the benefits. Now, in case you want to stay and actually understand what we're doing, we can, we can start the more in-depth part of the tutorial, which will be much more discretionary. So what we are doing here is basically applying a negative offset to our voltage so that the CPU can run at the same clock speed as before, but with lower voltage because the CPUs are overvolted by default. Now, you can play around with this, okay? So if you have a very lucky CPU, you might be able to get away with 0 0.075. Especially if you have an i5-13600K, this will work for you. But you wanna play around with this and everything in the middle. Basically, the higher the negative number, the better this will be. In case you cannot select the minus in your BIOS, you, you will have to put the minus in front of the offset right here, so minus 0 0.05. Uh, but play around with this. 0.075 is the maximum I personally recommend, okay? So play around with it, find what works for you, and this is it. Now, the XMP, of course, we enabled it just to get the maximum performance out of our RAM. That's pretty much obvious. If your PC crashes because of the XMP, it means your RAM is not fully stable. You might have to lower the frequency a bit, but this is another topic for another day. Now, CPU cooler tuning. Not every board has this, and what this does is basically it is a masked automatic overclocking feature. So this is what causes most of the CPU to be overheating in this board. So if you have it on stock on water cooler, the CPU will run fully unlocked. So this is actually a way to get more performance and we can pair this with undervolting. So for example, if you actually have a very good cooler and you want maximum performance via undervolt, you can leave this one on water cooler, go all the way down, do your usual undervolting here, 0 0.05, and this will give you the absolute best performance out there because this is an automatic tuning that scales in real time and by having more voltage headroom it allows you to push the clocks higher. Now here is another thing you can do if you care about temperatures. You can go into advanced CPU configuration and find active e-cores. Now there you can just go there and put zero. Now you will disable your e-cores. Now these don't really help you for gaming. In some games they do but in most games they don't. What they do is they provide additional heat. So by disabling them, you will dramatically reduce the heat your system outputs, but it will reduce your multi-thread score. So treat this with caution. Then, if you don't have the cooler tuning, like the water cooler, air cooler, etc., you can just go down here and find something that's called long duration power limit, and you wanna just unlock it. Put all nines and put this to the maximum. This is obviously for maximum performance, okay? So you can do this. This will also help you increase your performance. Now, this is basically over if you want to just do the dynamic undervolting. So this basically keeps the CPU behavior as stock and just dynamically undervolt it, right? However, we can also do a static undervolt. So how a static undervolt works 
is we don't use an offset. We use a static V core, okay? So we put this one on override or fixed, depending on your motherboard. And now we wanna set our V core to roughly 1.2 volt. Now, again, this value here, the lower, the better, the higher, the more temperature, okay? So the best CPUs will be able to do 1.15, and the worst will need 1.225 roughly, okay? So that's the range you're working in. And now what you wanna do if you use this is you wanna go basically in your core ratio and you wanna put this to the stock core ratio of your CPU, okay? So you just go on Google, see how much your CPU has a ratio and you just put that one there. Same goes for the E cores. Now the E core ratio for the i5-12600K is 36th. Uh, or 37 actually depends but yes you can just put it to 36 or 37 and your pico ratio this is usually slightly under 50 so you can just put the stock clock or you can just reduce it to 47 to get a tiny improvement when it comes to temperature even more okay and now you go down here again you put 1.2 and then you play around with this so if you have the time to test it you can try to push the, the core clock higher, okay? So like you try 48 and you run a stress test, you see if it's stable. And if it's not, you lower it, you go to 47. Or you put the voltage higher. This is basically voltage point overclocking. It's a bit more complex, but I wanted to give you guys a range for this one as well. For most people, I do recommend the first setting. Well guys, if the video was helpful, please subscribe to the channel. I have many more tutorials for GPUs as well, as well as other CPUs. And we go very in depth with hardware testing as well. I do budget builds, so you might wanna check it out. Thank you for your time and see you in the next one. Bye.